Welcome everybody, we are at Seton Delaval Hall and we are going to explore more of Tartarian architecture. Seton Delaval Hall is a grade one listed country house situated amongst the villages of Seton Sluice and Seton Delaval in Northumberland, England. Seton Delaval Hall was built near to the coastline and northward from Newcastle upon Tyne. According to the official story about Seton Delaval Hall, it was designed by Sir John Vanbra in 1718 for Admiral George Delaval. Seton Delaval Hall was reopened to the public by the National Trust on the 17th of December 2009. The construction of Seton Delaval Hall was completed in April 1728 and the Delaval family went on to reside there for over 100 years. What brought my interest to this elegant building is to how Seton Delaval Hall might have appeared before the destruction of Great Tartaria, where numerous stately homes were repurposed and transformed. The architect, dramatist and herald called Sir John Vanbra designed many buildings which exhibited aspects of Tartarian architecture. Such buildings include Castle Howard, Blenheim Palace, King's Western House, which are huge estates located throughout the United Kingdom. These are all incredible buildings that clearly display many features from Tartarian architecture. It is very possible that Castle Howard, Blenheim Palace and King's Western House, as with many others in the United Kingdom, were steadily repurposed, upgraded or altered. Many of the buildings were actually constructed during the medieval period or later during the Gothic Revival starting in 1847. On the 3rd of January 1822, a fire destroyed the west wing of Seton Delaval House and it would appear from examining photos of the Victorian period that the ornate concrete urn structures you see on the top of the buildings were rebuilt. Vanbra's design was supposedly inspired by the stately Dilla Kusha Coffee of Lucknow in central Uttar Pradesh in northern India, which influenced Baruch architecture. The Dilla Kusha Coffee was apparently built in 1800 and it was then shelled, being near demolished in 1857 during the Lucknow siege. When you look at the beautiful detail in the Seton Delaval Hall, it seems this building had a more profound technical purpose. Did this involve drawing the terrific energy from the soil and gravel around the property? The Delaval family had owned the estate since the time of the Norman Conquest in 1066. Admiral George Delaval brought the estate from an impoverished kingsman called Sir John Delaval in 1717. George Delaval had made his fortune from capturing prize ships while in the Royal Navy and had also served as a British envoy during the reign of Queen Anne Stuart. In 1718, Admiral George Delaval called on the famous architect Sir John Vanbra to advise him on how to modernise and enhance Seton Delaval Hall. The Delaval family lived at Seton Delaval Hall for over 100 years until the death of the last Delaval in 1822. Seton Delaval Hall then passed through a series of owners and it fell into disrepair. The building was open to the public in 1950 and is now managed by the National Trust. When you look around Seton Delaval Hall, you see all these incredible alignments and one of the most impressive ones is through the main doors, which leads right through to an obelisk. I never visited down this far as it was raining like it does a lot up in Northern England. But behind the obelisk is a place called Holly Well, which is no doubt on a major geomagnetic ley line. Interestingly, on further research, there is a ruins of a castle at Hollywell called Starlight Castle, which is more or likely on this ley line. 
Apparently the name Starlight came from the construction of the castle that was built under Starlight in 24 hours to play a prank on a female companion visiting the Delaval estate when this is actually most likely some sort of druidic settlement. The various internal areas of Seaton Delaval Hall felt very alive in certain sections and then sometimes a very dead energy. The areas where the frequencies and vibrations felt slower were apparently where the servants resided, the lower basement area. But this has all been updated because the west wing of the hall was burnt down on the 3rd of January 1822. But just by looking at the shapes of the walls of Seaton Delaval Hall, these were most certainly designed for some other purpose. When I entered into the main hall, I observed some amazing ornate statues which have never actually been attributed to any historical names to describe who they represent, which is very bizarre. The silver ball inside Seaton Delaval Hall is a piece of artwork that is currently being exhibited as Seaton Delaval Hall is now used for art exhibitions and theatrical performances. The staff in this hall have been very informative about the incredible history of Seaton Delaval Hall. It is a matter of speculation as to how Seaton Delaval Hall originally looked. However, we can most certainly say the exact symmetry of Seaton Delaval Hall appears to display perfectly aligned geometry in so many ways. Such design features were not constructed by chance and would have required a tremendous amount of skill and craftsmanship to construct these integral parts of Seaton Delaval Hall. What did the interior of this beautiful building truly look like? I believe there is a hidden science behind this design and construction. Also, there is a distinct possibility that buildings like this were adapted over time and the actual dates which have been given for when they were constructed are not correct. Most certainly, the Victorians used stone urns on many of their buildings as a symbol of elegance and sophistication. It is well known that during the Victorian period, there was a fascination and obsession with death and mortality. However, what if these urns, which have all been rebuilt, were actually used as some kind of antennae or resonators, which could harness the atmospheric terrific electricity of planet Earth? The ornate arches in many of the buildings from the Victorian period could have functioned as huge magnets that pulled the terrific electricity from the soil of the ground and transmitted it into buildings. From looking at the buildings which Sir John Vanbra designed, they all seem to display domes with needles. And it is very likely that this was the same with Seaton Delaval Hall. We must remember that photography did not become commercially viable until April 1837, so there is no way we can ever confirm what the actual purpose of Seaton Delaval Hall really was. Following the First World War and the Second World War, plus massive social upheaval, the urban landscapes of planet Earth drastically changed. The kind of material world that existed before television, radio, mobile phones, the internet and 5G resonated with very different frequencies and vibrations that those of the 21st century which disrupt the natural rhythms of humans. The version of existence that was so pervasive during the civilization of Great Tartaria would have been profoundly different because of how terrific electricity was harnessed from planet Earth. Thank you for watching everybody. This is the end of this episode of Tartarian Architecture. Please subscribe if you haven't already and please like, comment and share on this video. Thank you and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.